reading of uh, Whitby, Oshawa, which I'm sure you're familiar with. I am. Both provincially and federally. Okay. Uh, <laughs> first of all... This is going to be a Christine and Jim question. I love these questions. <laughs> This is, this, is, this is going to be quite complimentary, actually. I want to commend you. I want to commend you, first of all. You haven't said anything that I disagree with uh, at all. I want to commend you for the remarks that you made at Queen's Park during our reception after the, uh, the political meetings were over. And I almost dropped my drink when I heard you say that we should become a self-regulatory body and that you couldn't understand why we weren't going that route. Now, there are some amongst our leadership who have a fear, for very good reasons, have a fear of going that route because there are complications, uh, there are unknowns, but it's uh, a route that I firmly believe that we should be going in and I'm, I'm very happy to hear that you agree with that. My question is this, if Advocus decides that they should pursue that route, will you, as minister, within the limits that your powers will allow, work with us to bring that about? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, um, and, and, and thanks, for the, thanks for the question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. Listen, now that was very nice. Do you want to hear? Listen, I had a compliment paid to me last night that just blew me away. And since you're here, I'll tell you about it. Who here watches Dragon's Den? Those of you who love Dragon's Den. I know Arlene. Arlene did a thing for me last year, so I got to know Arlene. She's very nice. I really like Arlene. But the Ontario Chamber of Commerce has their Ontario Business Excellence Awards, and so I was the keynote speaker at that last night. But the MCs were Arlene and Kevin O'Leary. I would never assume that Kevin O'Leary uh, would be the kind of middle of the road liberal politician that I am. <laughs> and that is, from what he has said, is more to one extreme than the other. In my remarks to the chamber, and I was thanking them for their contribution, I just said something very simple that we all know, right? Government doesn't create wealth, we redistribute it. We redistribute wealth so that every child gets an education, that everyone is sick gets seen first, whoever is sickest gets seen first, that we can have wonderful roads and police officers. I mean, that's, that's the business that we're in, raising taxes and redistributing that wealth. But we don't create wealth, so I was just there to say thank you. Well, my God, Kevin O'Leary got up and said, I can't believe that a politician actually got up and said what everybody in this room knows. And so uh, that was a damn good compliment <laughs> But man, Kevin O'Leary, that's, <laughs> I'm on a roll. <laughs> Question. Uh, my name's Richard Austin. I'm in Michael Cole's riding. Yeah. Um, now that we're going to get rid of the PST, how many provincial bureaucrats will lose their jobs because of it? Yeah, 1,271 full-time equivalents. It's about 1,500 people. Uh, but in our world, we talk about FTEs, right? So full-time positions, because that's about half my ministry. So you cannot uh, have people uh, collecting a tax that doesn't exist. And after July the 1st, we're getting out of the provincial sales tax. There won't be one in Ontario. There'll just be the HST. It'll be administered by the federal government. For those uh, people who work for us, the good news is part of the deal with the federal government is the fact that they need our people. You can't take the GST and ramp it up from 5 to 13 without having the kind of skilled people that have had wonderful careers uh, when it comes to tax administration and tax auditing and tax collection. Those people, uh, under our HR agreement with the federal government, uh, have a first crack. If you're a, if you're a tax auditor um, and you've been doing it for 20 years, you don't necessarily want to bump and become the communications officer at the Ministry of Natural Resources when you've spent your whole life building a career in the tax system. So those people, uh, by and large, I think, uh, are of high interest to the federal government. But it'll save our government $100 million a year. That's the cost of 1,271 FD. 100.8, I'm a numbers guy. To 
be confrontational, but I don't care whether it's federal money or provincial money that pays these people. I'm concerned about my money paying these people. If we're reducing, getting rid of a tax, why would we still need 1,200 people either at the federal level or the provincial level? GST has its own audit process. My concern is the growth of the civil service generally and the problems that we see in the automotive industry with people being paid, let's say, liberal amounts of, wa of wages and long-term benefits which are no longer reflected in the private sector, when are we going to reduce taxes by reducing expenditures? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, our government uh, had the lowest increase in expenditures in over a decade just this past year. I mean, obviously, we saw the recession coming, as everyone has done. The question I have for you is I'm the tax collector. Uh, Dwight gives me two days take, and I give him the other 363 days of income. The ministry costs about $200 million. Our ministry raises $37 billion. But there's one thing that I've learned being on this side of the fence. You know, not everybody pays their taxes. And the people who don't pay their taxes are stealing from their neighbors. And what I'm concerned about is making sure that the people who are stealing from all of us who are law-abiding and paying our taxes, that those people are caught and that they pay up. Because when they don't pay up, we all pay more. Uh, so I have learned the important value that those people play in our society. And I wouldn't diminish the work that they do. It's just that the federal government believes uh, that there is a career for them with the federal service. What those people decide to do, that is their choice. Uh, but uh, they do play a valuable role in society. Uh, and uh, so as their minister, I will always stand up and defend the value that they uh, provide. Now, your overall question is the inequity between the private sector and the public sector. And I know the Premier of Ontario has talked about this. The private sector has gone through a recession, right? The public sector, because of the nature of the Keynesian response that we've had, has done things to try to ameliorate that. But there has to be a, rec uh, a reconciliation between the private sector, which pays for the public sector, and that is coming. And we are working through that, and I think that you'll find our next budget, if you think our last budget wasn't tinkering, uh, you should see our next budget. We have to figure out how to get ourselves back to uh, fiscal sustainability. Whichever jurisdictions figure out that first, win in the 21st century. The ones who ignore that question lose. Last time I checked, we're all supposed to win. And so that's why uh, you have my assurance that those kind of discussions are going on right now. Two more questions? Go ahead. Hey, Cindy. Um, hi. Three quarters of my clients have made every effort to maintain their benefit plans for their employees.